Hello and welcome to our weekly little service from Christ Church St. James in Etobicoke, West Toronto. And um, we're really delighted you spent a few minutes with us today. We hope this will really be a, a blessing to you. A little reading from the first letter of John just to get us started. When John writes these words, From the very first day we were there, taking it all in, we heard it with our own ears, we saw it with our own eyes, we verified it with our own hands. The word of life appeared right before our eyes. We saw it happen. And now we're telling you in most sober prose that what we witnessed was incredibly this. The infinite life of God himself took shape before us. We saw it, we heard it, and now we're telling you so you can experience it along with us the experience of communion with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. And our motive for writing is simply this. We want you to enjoy this too. Your joy will double our joy. That's our motive as well. So we just pray together. Father, we thank you for this glorious day. And we thank you that we have reason to celebrate and something wonderful to share not just something, but someone, namely our Lord Jesus. And we would really pray that even now in these few moments together, we'd have a wonderful awareness of the presence and the power and the love of God right where we are. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm so happy to introduce to you now a wonderful friend, her name is Meredith. She's actually Dr. Meredith Hawkins. And um, she's got something wonderful to share, not just with the children, but with all of us. But yes, for the children specifically. Give it a listen. Thanks so much. Hello, everyone. My name is Meredith. And this is my friend, Valentino. And as you can see, Valentino says, I need a hug. I'm going to give him a hug because I love you, Valentino. And together, we're going to give you some really good news today. What's, what's that news, Valentino? What's that news? Here, we've got something special to show you. So this is our news for today. And we want to tell you that Jesus loves me. And Jesus loves you too, Valentino. Jesus loves us all. Well, what does that mean, other than he wants to give us a big hug? Well, Jesus loves us in a very special way. He's our special friend. He's always with us, always. Jesus is always with you. Whenever you're looking at beautiful things like flowers and butterflies, whenever you're feeling alone or feeling sad, he's right there with you. He's never going to let you be alone. And so... We need to realize this. We have something really incredibly special to share. Well, so who else needs Jesus? Is it just you and I and, and you and your parents? Who needs Jesus? The whole world needs Jesus. That's right, Valentina. The whole world needs Jesus. So when Jesus was going up to heaven, and he was saying goodbye to his closest friends. He gave them this commandment. He said, go and make disciples of all nations. Now, what does it mean to be a disciple? Well, we know that in the Bible, Jesus had 12 disciples. They were people that stayed with him and learned from him like students, like a special kind of a student who's learning closely everything from their teacher. And now we're meant to be his disciples, and we're meant to go out and make disciples of all nations. What does that mean? Of all the countries of the whole world. Well, how can the whole, how can we tell the whole world about Jesus? Valentino, that seems like it would be a very big job, I would say. So how can we go about doing that? For example, these are some wonderful children who live in the Arctic. And they have a lot of fun, as you can see, playing in the snow. 
But they need to know about Jesus. Valentino, we've got to give them the message about Jesus. What are we going to do? Well, the good news is that there, over the centuries, there have been people who we call missionaries. How do they get the name missionaries? Because mission means to send. And who's doing the sending? God is sending people like the man in this picture. And he's sending him up to the Arctic so that he can tell the children all about Jesus and how Jesus loves them. And look, Valentino, how is he getting up to the Arctic? He's using a dog sled. And dogs are very, very important in spreading the good news around the world. Well, how happy were the people in the Arctic to learn the good news about Jesus? They were so happy that they built this beautiful cathedral. And it's shaped like, what is it shaped like, Valentino? It's shaped like an igloo. And inside, it's very beautiful also. And people are very, very happy when they come here to celebrate Jesus. And the altar where they celebrate the communion is shaped like a dog sled. So this is a very special place. And what this shows us is the people who were in the Arctic were so excited when they got the good news about Jesus that they went on to build this beautiful place where they now, with great joy, come together to sing hymns and say prayers and, and tell God how much they love him. Now, there's also children in a place called Tibet. This is a long way away from here. This is next to China, and it's up in the mountains. And these are the children that are living up there. And Jesus really loves them too. And we want them to know that, don't we, Valentino? So what are we going to do? Well, I have had the privilege of getting to meet some missionaries that have gone to Tibet and to many other places to tell the people there all about Jesus and how much he loves them. And this is Dr. Doug. He's a doctor and he's taking care of patients, but at the same time, he's looking after their bodies. He's telling them about Jesus and how he loves their souls also. So that has been very important. And have people listened to this message? Were they happy, Valentina? Were they happy to hear about Jesus? They were so happy to hear about Jesus that this is actually a celebration going on. You can see it was recent because everybody's wearing a mask. This was last Christmas. The people were so happy to hear the message about Jesus that they were having a big celebration for Jesus' birthday. Don't you wish we could be there? Where else are there children that need to hear about Jesus? Valentino, have you heard about the Amazon? That's down in South America. This is an area, there's a river called the Amazon River, and there's an enormous rainforest. And there's children who live there, and this is how they are. This is how they dress, and this is their own special way of getting themselves dressed up. And we would love to get them that message. Valentino, wouldn't we be happy if we could give them the message about Jesus? So how does one do that? Well, one way is, because it's very hard to get down there to that rainforest and the big river, is that people fly down there in little planes. And look at that man in the middle here in the tan pants. He's a happy looking man. And why is he so happy? He is so happy because he's giving the message about Jesus to all of these children that live in the Amazon. And he's telling them that Jesus loves them. So the people in the Amazon were so happy when they learned that Jesus loved them in this special way that they built this wonderful church. And you can see right here in the middle of all the jungle and the rainforest, you've got a wonderful church where they can go and sing hymns and be really happy and where they can tell each other that Jesus loves them. So we've heard today that there are wonderful people that are going out there and they are spreading the word to the far corners of the world and they're telling people and they're going and they're making disciples of all nations. Well, Valentino, how can we help with that? That sounds pretty exciting and pretty important. What can we do about it? What do you think? Well, one thing is we could help to support those missionaries. It costs a lot to get to these places and to help these people. And so this is, Valentino, this is something that we could do. We could save up our money and we could think of ways. We could have bake sales. We could do things to find money. And we could send that to these missionaries. Our church can help to give us some information about how we can do that. And that would be a good thing. What else can we do, Valentino? Ah, 
we can spread the word about Jesus. That's very important. Let's go out there and start telling people. We can start with our friends. And if our family hasn't heard about Jesus, it would be so great if we could tell him. What about we tell people at school? What about we tell people down the street? What about we just start spreading the word that Jesus loves you? That's a secret that's too big and too wonderful. We don't want to keep it to ourselves. And what is the most important thing of all? We need to pray. Valentino, there is nothing more important than to pray to God. We can pray that God will help us to send the message about Jesus all around the world so that people will hear that message. They'll come to Jesus and their lives will be changed forever. And that is the good news. And I'm going to give you one more piece of good news. And this is something that Jesus told his friends when he was going up to heaven. He said, and remember, I am with you each and every day until the end of the age. That means that for every day, for the end of your lives, until the end of this world, Jesus is going to be with you. And that is really, really good news. And so we are now going to say a special prayer for you. And Valentino is going to, kneel, going to kneel down and he's going to say his prayers. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we know that you love all the people of the world. We know that you sent Jesus, your only son. And we know that Jesus loves me. He loves you. He loves all the children around the whole world. Help us, O oh Lord, help the efforts of those people that are going to the far corners of the world to bring that good news and help us to be part of that too because it is probably the most important news that we could ever tell. We give you thanks for this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We love you too. Well, I'm really thankful for Meredith and to Meredith for sharing with us the way she just just did. And I really hope that we'll have more opportunities to hear from Meredith, not just for the children's sake, that's really important, but for all of us. And what she was just telling us about, it just reminds me of a little song that I probably haven't heard in 35 years. But um, it's real simple. This is how it goes. Stop and let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. Stop and let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. He forgave my sin and he saved my soul. He cleansed my heart and he made me whole. Stop and let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. Go and tell the story of the Christ of Calvary. Go and tell the story of the Christ of Calvary. He'll forgive their sins and he'll save their soul. He'll cleanse their hearts and he'll make them whole. Go and tell the story of the Christ of Calvary. Yeah. Pretty simple, but pretty wonderful. And uh, that's the call all of our lives who have experienced Jesus to feel free and Looking forward to sharing it with anybody who is in a place to understand and listen. Speaking of which, I hope right now that we're all in a place to listen a little bit and learn as we open up the gospel according to Mark. We've been walking through Mark since uh, last September. It's the shortest of the biographies of Jesus, but it seems to me we're taking our time. We're just in chapter 8 right now, and we're going to see something wonderful here about Jesus. And uh, we're going to trust him the Holy Spirit, to speak into your life and mine as we just read this little tiny bit from Mark chapter 8, another episode in the life of Jesus. When we last read from the Gospel of Mark, um, we met people who were eternally grateful for the experience that they'd had with Jesus. They had come from all over the place. Um, they had come, some people were blind, people brought them. Some were lame, some were deaf, they came and they were in the presence of Jesus for three days. And Jesus just tenderly cared for all of them. And then he fed them all, 
which is kind of remarkable since there were thousands of people involved. So when they went home, they went home with a whole different outlook on life, a whole different appreciation of God, a whole different understanding of what it means to be loved by God. What an amazing time that must have been. If any of you, if we'd asked them, so what do you think of Jesus? Well, I tell you, they would have had something to say and it would have been, they would have been lost for words because of what they'd experienced, because of the love of Jesus. But now we're going to see a, a different bunch of people who don't share that kind of attitude or that kind of gratitude when it comes to Jesus. It's a real study in contrast, what we're about to read. So I hope I can do it justice. We'll give it a shot. Uh, beginning at verse 11 of chapter 8 of Mark. Here we go. When the Pharisees, okay, already you're bracing yourself. <laughs> when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had arrived, they came and started to argue with him. Testing him, they demanded that he show them a miraculous sign from heaven to prove his authority. All right. One way or another, people respond to Jesus. <laughs> um... Some people rush to be near him. They want to hear him. When we've read of other examples already in Mark, when people heard Jesus was nearby, they just couldn't, they, they didn't waste any time getting, they dropped everything just to get close to Jesus. If you, if you run through chapters one to seven and chapter, beginning of chapter eight, you'll just see that. People are eager to, if Jesus is coming by, you don't want to miss out. In fact, our prayer, by the way, with this little video thing every week, is that for some of us, this may be regarded as that very same opportunity, that Jesus has come near, and we don't want to miss out. And my prayer is that we will come near to him, just as we are, just as we are, and be ready to listen and receive all he has for us. So that's the best way to respond to Jesus, but what we're seeing here is the other way to respond to Jesus. Um, when these folks came, we, we just read about them. They came and to argue and test and demand that he show them a miraculous sign from heaven. Well, can you imagine? Just put yourself in their shoes for a second. Don't stay there very long, though. But try to imagine it. You get up in the morning, you put your shoes on, and maybe a little child in the house, you know, Daddy, where are you going today? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm going out with my friends to track down Jesus and when we find him, we're going to argue with him, and we're going to test him, and we're going to demand that he show us a miracle. That's what I'm going to do today. Thanks for asking. And the little child says, Daddy, do you mean the Jesus, the Jesus who calmed the sea in that storm? Do you mean the Jesus who rescued that young girl from that evil presence in her life? Do you mean the Jesus who restored that man's hearing and speech? Do you mean the Jesus who fed all those thousands of people and tenderly cared for them and brought healing into their bodies? That's the Jesus you want to track down and argue with and test and demand from? That's the one, Daddy? I can imagine a little child just shaking their head saying, I don't get it. And I can imagine some of us right now sh saying, we don't get it. What is, what is it with these guys? Who are these guys? And why are they so fired up? Why are they so anti-Jesus? What's going on? Well, first of all, who are these guys? If you boil it right down, and I know it's really simple, but if you boil it right down, they were self-appointed religious police. I mean, for them, it was all about laws. All about laws as they understood them and as they added to them. And I doubt if any of these guys would have been on the top of your list to invite to your party. I mean, super critical, super judgmental. Um, maybe one way to describe them, they seem to be baptized in lemonade, a, a real sour bunch. Um, for them, religion was all do's and don'ts, and it was mostly don'ts. And the sad thing is I reflect upon it. I mean, it's really possible to get drawn into that kind of a space if we're not careful. To, to what really is a lifeless and a loveless religion. And it's horrible 
what influence people in leadership can have upon other people who, who live that way. A horror, they can damage people really badly, not to mention damaging the reputation of Jesus. I mean, on more than one occasion, I've heard people say things, if that's Christianity, I don't want it. And it's been a real joy to be able to say, you know, I agree 100%. If that's Christianity, I don't want it either. And, I, and in fact, if that's Christianity, Jesus doesn't want it. Because <laughs> that's not what he's about at all. The wonderful thing is, that's not Christianity. So let's leave it where it is. I mean, a lot of people think when they, they say they're rejecting God, they're rejecting a misrepresentation of God. So it's good to reject those and then to give ourselves time to appreciate the real thing. So that's a bit about who these guys were. But why are they so fired up? Well, again, I know I'm just making it simple for my own sake. But basically, it's because their minds are made up about God. They've got it all figured out, nice little box, and no one's going to mess with that, especially Jesus. So they come to argue, they come to test, they come to demand. And again, I know people, and maybe you do too, who seem to take kind of some delight in arguing religion. I also know people who seem to take a bit of a delight in putting down Jesus. Um, you might know people like that. Maybe you have been in that kind of space before in your own experience. Um, if so, I would just say this. If you are having a hard time believing in Jesus, please know that Jesus is not having a hard time believing in you. If you're not able to take it all in yet, and I totally respect that, please know that Jesus is able to take you in, to welcome you just the way you are. And what better place to come with our questions and our doubts and our issues than in the presence of Jesus? I mean, his disciples did it. I mean, it's pretty wonderful to read how many times the disciples had questions. And Jesus, he took them all. So it's good, to, the freedom. And uh, which just makes me say this. If in your church experience, you didn't have the freedom to voice a sincere question. I'm really sorry. If you were sort of force-fed something, believe this, don't ask any questions, uh, I, I am very sorry. And I would hope that even these little times may be a safe place to be able to ask questions. And please know that if you did ask a question, we wouldn't pretend to have all the answer, but we would do our very best to find them. So I hope there's a freedom there. We would be thrilled, I'd be thrilled, if you felt freedom to ask a question. Now, it's one thing to ask with a desire to learn. It's something else to ask because you, you're here to demand something from Jesus. And this wasn't the first time people came to demand something from Jesus, and it would not be the last time. It's interesting, when you read the same story in Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapter 16, this is what Jesus says. Jesus says, um, after he sighs, he sighs. When they're ready to debate him and demand, he sighs. And I think we understand, we can appreciate the sigh. But then he says these words. You know the saying, red sky at night means fair weather tomorrow. Red sky in the morning means foul weather all day. You know how to interpret the weather signs in the sky but you don't know how to interpret the signs of the times. Only an evil, adulterous generation would demand a miraculous sign. But the only sign I will give them is this, the sign of the prophet Jonah. Interesting. The sign of the prophet Jonah. Just a couple of quick lessons here. Number one, asking sincere questions is one thing. Demanding a sign from heaven is quite another. It's like saying, I'll believe you, Jesus, if. If you do something. But Jesus doesn't play along. Jesus is not an entertainer 
to jump through our hoops. He's not a politician seeking our vote. He's not an employee to be bossed around. He is Lord. Who am I to tell Jesus what to do to satisfy me? That's the first lesson I get out of this. But secondly, there is only one sign that matters. Jesus called it, in this part, the sign of Jonah. Now, the Pharisees, they didn't get it. But we get it. You get it. We know that Jesus is saying that just as Jonah was in the belly of that fish for three days, Jesus would be in the tomb. He's telling them, and he's telling any of us who want proof of his authority, that the only sign we need takes us right back to the cross. There could be no greater sign or demonstration of God's love and of God's power. Nothing comes close to the sign of the cross. The Pharisees, they demanded Jesus do something to amaze them, something out there uh, deserving their applause. But Jesus, through his death and resurrection, would do something in here deserving our allegiance. Jesus wouldn't give them what they demanded, but he would soon give them what they needed, his very life. What an amazing man, and what an amazing savior, and what an amazing God. Well, this is how our little section ends. Verse 13, after Jesus said that, Jesus got back in the boat and left them and crossed to the other side of the lake. Jesus got back in the boat and left them. Jesus left them. Did those three words hit you the way they hit me? Jesus left them. But Jesus, we have more unkind things to say to you. <laughs> Jesus left them. But Jesus, we're not done demanding you do what we say. Jesus left them. But Jesus, we're giving you one more chance to prove your authority to us. Jesus left them. Why? Well, in actual fact, and I know you see it already, in actual fact, they had left him. There was no room in their lives for him. And Jesus knew it. He knew he wasn't wanted. He knew he wasn't welcome. And he wasn't the least bit interested in arguing with them or meeting their demands. So he got in the boat with his disciples and he left them. I mean, there's a huge lesson here. Like the Pharisees, we can choose consciously or otherwise to do life without Jesus. And as crazy as it's going to sound to some of us, we can actually be super religious and faithful churchgoers and still do life without Jesus. The Pharisees were neck deep in religion. And I'm sure they didn't miss a worship service. But Jesus left them. And those are words I never want to hear about anybody I know and love. Imagine giving Jesus a reason to leave, refusing to recognize his authority, closing our eyes to the ultimate sign of God's love, namely the cross of Christ. And for those who say they can't believe, if you dig a little deeper, you usually find out it's not that they can't believe, it's that they won't believe. I won't believe there is a God who loves me so much that he would come and give his life for me. I won't believe that Jesus is all about forgiveness, that he's all about healing, he's all about strength, he's all about love. I won't accept him into my life. My life is mine and mine alone, and that's that. And to such a person, I would just hope I could ask two questions. Number one, does rejecting Jesus bring you the happiness and the meaning and the satisfaction in life that you've been searching for? I mean, really, honestly? 
And number two, do you think you'll be just as happy and just as satisfied on that day when you stand before God and God asks you, what did you do with my son? Will you be pleased to report you just couldn't or you just wouldn't believe him? So I just ask the obvious question now, but it's a really important one. Where are you with Jesus? And would you consider welcoming the one who welcomes you? Would you consider loving the one who loves you? Would you consider giving your life to the one who gave his life for you? And I would pray you would not miss this opportunity because a new life is right there on the doorstep. One that is safe, one that is satisfying, and one that is secure. And it's found in the healing, forgiving, restoring hands, loving hands of Jesus. And I would just say, today is the day. Now is the time. Please, like the other group of people we read about, please don't let this opportunity pass you by. Amen. There's a wonderful old hymn um, that comes to mind right away. Uh, and uh, I'll just share. I was going to say confidentially, but this isn't very confidential, is it? <laughs> um, the morning after that Jesus so kindly entered my life, um, this hymn was sung at 7 a.m. that next morning. And I just wept like a baby when I heard it. And for years later, I couldn't sing it without crying. When I survey the wondrous cross On which the Prince of glory died my richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God all the vain things that charm me most I sacrifice them to his blood see from his head his hands his feet Sorrow and love flow mingle down. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet? Or thorns compose so rich a crown? Were thou around? Of nature mine that were a present far too small, love so amazing, so divine demands my soul, my life, my all. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. Pretty wonderful stuff, isn't it? Jesus stands at the door of your life, and Jesus longs for you to come to a place to say, Jesus, please enter this heart of mine. Please make yourself in my, at home in my life. 
Please forgive all that has to be forgiven. Please wash away all that has to be washed away and begin a brand new life in me. I don't want to miss this opportunity. Please, Jesus, even now, hear my cry. And if that's something of what's going on in your heart, I just say, welcome. Welcome to a brand new world with all new brothers and new sisters who want to be there for you. And again, I would just say one more time, please don't be hesitant to be in touch. We'd be honored with all we are. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship across the miles of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Thanks so very much. Until next time.